Lindsay, so I've got a nice introduction. This is quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> OK, um, my name is Sorab Bobby. I work for Echo Energy as a senior software developer. And um, we are going to talk about serverless today. So um, we'll see in five minutes what is serverless, how to use it, and the pros and cons, right? Um, so what is serverless? Um, necessarily, it doesn't mean that there is no server. Usually, uh, people, um, when, when first time I heard the term serverless, I was like, what? Serverless? There's no server? Um, so s essentially, serverless means function as a service. Um, a lot of people also call it backend as a service. And uh, some people started calling uh, nano service, which is uh, happened to be my favorite terminology after working on microservices. Um, so let's take a quick um, example of how a monolithic application works, right? A monolithic application is a huge application with JavaScript, Java, or PHP, all backend code, and um, is tied together, right? So you will probably have a client browser where you will make a request to a server, uh, let's say pet store, where you're buying pets, right? And the server processes that request and makes a call to the database, right? And they bring the, bring the data and give it back to the uh, client. So what we're talking about here is basically the middle guy, pet, uh, pet store server, is what we're talking about here, right? Um, the same thing that you would do if you have a serverless architecture is you will make a, you will have a client browser, which is still there, and then it makes a call to an authentication service, gets the information about the user, so if you see that we're actually removing the intelligence of the browser that in the monolithic application gets information about the user first that we have completely removed and put into something else, which is called uh, authentication service. Get the authentication information, then makes a call to an API gateway. Uh, the API gateway is a, is a component which basically sends that request to something called a function, let's say purchase function, there is no uh, class or code, just a small function, small code, like get, get me request get method, right? And then that makes a call to its own database. It could be a MongoDB, it could be NoSQL database, SQL database, or whatever it is. And then once you purchase that information, that uh, uh, pet, then you may want to search for it. If you want to search for it, you will have a search function, right? The search function goes to uh, some other database, right? It could be, if you're searching, it could be Solar or Elasticsearch or whatever uh, search data, the NoSQL database <coughs> you use. That's all about a function as a service. So if you see the back end, this uh, purchase function, search function, these are all uh, small, small um, uh, function which gives you information. There is really no server. But let's, let's take a look at if there is no server or not. So um, basically what happens is, um, you do not uh, maintain the server by yourself. There is a server still there. Um, so these, uh, some of the big companies like Amazon Lambda is one of the most popular ones, then there is Google Cloud Functions, then there is Microsoft Azure function, Functions, then some others like uh, IBM Cloud, and uh, I think uh, DigitalOcean as well. Um, so what happens is basically, essentially, you have to learn how to uh, create Amazon Lambda. For example, if you want to use Amazon Lambda, then you just learn how to create Amazon Lambda. They provide you a, a little tiny IDE where you write the code. You don't have to have an uh, IDE in your um, machine. You don't have to run any uh, server. Um, as a developer, I would still prefer to uh, run and test my code in my server and then ship it. Uh, and if you want to do that, you can still uh, zip it up everything and put uh, upload that entire code into uh, Amazon Lambda. Um, what happens is uh, now um, once you put that and you just uh, there is a they provides option to test you click a button called test and that runs that uh, code uh, that function gets the data from the DB it could be Elastic Cloud it could be Mongo uh, DB in their own cloud uh, or however way you want to uh, connect that right so uh, some of the pros is um, say what happens is is uh, the, the the best thing is the cost effective I'm sorry thirty seconds okay. Cost effective, you can save up to 70 to 90% um, of your money. Less operation, because you have all your um, operations by taken care by the Amazon Lambda. So you don't have to have your own services run, right? And then you can focus on code, uh, writing code. The cons are that um, 
there is uh, uh, basically latency. What happens is one of the biggest problem of serverless is that it takes a lot of time to. <laughs>